For all you folks out there who are interested in mountaineering or have ever dreamed of conquering the heights of the mightiest mountains like Everest, I dare you to picture this. Imagine being on top of the world where the air is as thin as your chances of success. Flashback to 1995, around 30 years ago, a time when the internet was just a whisper and people relied on tales and rumors to learn about far off lands. Alison Hargreaves, a bold mother of two, defied convention by traveling from the west to the east with resolutions to conquer the world's three highest mountains all in a single year, the mighty Everest, K2, and Kanchenjunga. As she ascended the treacherous slopes of Everest, her unparalleled commitment to facing the challenges alone without supplemental oxygen or permanent ropes echoed louder than the howling winds around her. But here's the gripping twist, when Peter Hillary, son of the first ever Everest conqueror, Edmund Hillary, decided to turn back, deeming the weather too harsh, Allison pressed on. Now, you might ask, what would drive a mother to risk it all? To defy the odds and continue her ascent, would you have made the same choice? Join us as we unravel the courageous and tragic journey of Allison Hargreaves. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Would you brave the peaks or heed the warnings? Before we dive in, let's contemplate the unimaginable choices she faced high above the clouds. Allison developed an inclination towards the mountains early on in her life. She was born on February 17, 1962, in the picturesque town of Derbyshire, England. Growing up, she embraced the great outdoors with an intense passion for mountains. It all began at the tender age of 13 when she conquered Mount Snowdon, which ignited a flame that would define her destiny. Fast forward to adulthood, and Allison, now a mother of two, six-year-old Tom Ballard and four-year-old Kate Ballard, dared to dream big. If you're wondering what her audacious goal was, it was to conquer the world's three highest peaks, Mount Everest, K2 and Kanchenjunga, all in a single year. To some, it seemed like an act of bravery, while others deemed it impossible. Allison tackled the usual north side trail to conquer the North Ridge. Assisted by a commercial crew, she reached the advanced base camp at a daring altitude of 6400 meters. Despite sharing the route with fellow climbers, Allison stuck to her strict rules. She carried all her supplies, crafted her own camps, and braved the challenge without the aid of supplemental oxygen. When she got to the top of the majestic Mount Everest, she quickly radioed a heartfelt message to her children, Tom and Kate. This marked a monumental achievement, making her the world's first woman to conquer Everest alone without extra oxygen. Celebrating with her family and friends, Allison felt an unshakable determination to continue her extraordinary journey. Merely a month after conquering Mount Everest, she set her sights on Pakistan, embarking on the next thrilling chapter of her mission, scaling the formidable K2. Joining forces with an American team, led by the seasoned Rob Slater, she ventured into the unknown. Despite being part of the team, her daring plan remained unchanged, tackling K2 solo, without the safety net of additional support or supplementary oxygen. Was it a wise move or a risky gamble? The answer loomed on the horizon, shrouded in suspense, awaiting revelation. Once the preparations were complete, the team embarked on their mission on August 6th, reaching Camp 4 at a daring altitude of 7,850 meters. Undeterred, they pressed on towards a treacherous dead zone at 8,000 meters. Weather challenges, a norm on K2, threw obstacles in their path. Teammate Alan Hanks seized an early weather break, conquering the summit and departing, leaving Allison cautious. Despite the dwindling base camp, Allison and leader Rob Slater stood resolute. Their determination, a beacon amid desolation, fueled the pursuit. A handful of climbers from other teams joined the cause for one last push. Battling ominous weather, the team set out for the summit on August 9th, only to find Camp 3 buried by an avalanche upon arrival on August 11th. On any regular mountain, a blunder like this might be chalked up to poor judgment, maybe setting up camp in the path of an avalanche, but on K2, there's no safe heaven. Danger lurks everywhere, especially from the looming threat of avalanches, making this peak one of the deadliest. Desperate to find their tents, they scoured the treacherous terrain for an agonizing hour. Finally, a sigh of relief as they stumbled upon Camp 4, miraculously still standing against the mountain's relentless fury. It was the evening of August 11th, and they were drained to the core. Opting for a much-needed rest, they resolved to tackle the next leg of their journey when the sun rose again. 
The mountain held its secrets and the suspense was only building. On the crisp morning of August 12th, the climbers found themselves under a sky that promised a smooth ascent. The weather forecast was a beacon of hope, suggesting ideal conditions that would persist for at least the next day and a half. As they readied themselves for the summit, fate introduced a twist. A chance encounter with a Spanish expedition also bound for the formidable K2. These Spanish climbers, having embarked on the journey from base camp on August 9th, unknowingly took a different route, the south-southeast spur instead of the Abruzzi spur. After a thorough discussion, the two teams reached a thrilling agreement. They would join forces and tackle the mountain together. With a shared goal and a mapped out plan to reach the bottleneck on August 13th, anticipation filled the air. In the quiet pre-dawn hours of August 13th, 11 climbers, including Allison and Rob, set out on their daring adventure. The day promised excitement, adventure, and exhaustion. However, the mountain had other plans. Even before reaching the treacherous bottling color, a perilous section where an enormous rock threatened to tumble at any moment, five climbers decided to call it quits. The risk was palpable, and the journey ahead was anything but certain. The stage was set for a high-stakes ascent into the unknown. Now, this is where it gets ever so interesting. Picture this. Imagine a daring climb up Everest where five climbers, including Peter Hillary, the son of the legendary Edmund Hillary, decided to abandon their mission. But why? When questioned about his choice, Peter reveals, the weather didn't look good, it was way too cold. Little did he know that this decision would prove to be a stroke of brilliance. As he descended to escape the deadly mountains, an electrifying revelation unfolded. A warm, moist air storm from the south was on a collision course with a powerful anti-cyclone from the north Chinese mountains. The suspense builds even more as we realize Peter's instincts spared him from a perilous encounter with nature's forces. At 5 p.m., a fierce storm struck Peter as he battled for survival in winds racing between 80 to 100 kilometers per hour. As he grappled with the tempest, descending beneath the ominous Black Pyramid, a treacherous section of the cliff's wide peak, situated 500 meters below K2, at 8,047 meters, he felt the storm's wrath too. Meanwhile, climbers on that perilous summit were already making their descent, casting fearful glances across the valley. To their amazement, climbers on K2 were still pushing forward despite the storm. On the flip side, the remaining six climbers pressed on, braving the challenging bottleneck area. Shortly after, they successfully reached the summit, leaving Jeff Blakes to rethink his pursuit. Opting out of the summit bid, he retreated to Camp 4, joining others who had abandoned their quest for the top. As the clock struck 6.45 p.m., Allison reached out to the climbers at the Spanish Camp 4 with thrilling news. She conquered the summit, and the weather was picture perfect, but the serenity did not last. A fierce wind, raging at 100 to 140 miles per hour from the north, began tearing at the once ideal summit. As daylight dwindled, an ominous turn of events unfolded. The chaos kicked off with Jeff Lakes, a Canadian climber, opting to retreat to Camp 4 of the Spanish expedition. He rested before descending to the Black Pyramid. Little did he know, wild winds lurked, obliterating his path. Meanwhile, Allison and her fellow climbers found themselves trapped in the dead zone, surrounded by howling gusts. The urgency to descend hit hard. A single misstep could spell disaster. Progressing cautiously, the storm caught up swiftly. With no sturdy ropes or shelter, they were at the mercy of the tempest. One by one, they were plucked from the mountain's grasp, tossed like playthings. Among them were three Spaniards, Javier Escartin, Javier Olivar, and Lorenzo Ortiz, alongside Bruce Grant from New Zealand, Rob Slater from America, and the indomitable Alison Hargreaves. The mountain had unleashed its fury and the battle for survival had begun. Two days later at Camp 2, the relentless storm claimed the Canadian climber Jeff Lakes, leaving him exhausted and unable to descend. Meanwhile, Allison, Rob, and their companions faced the unforgiving challenge of descending the mountain. The majestic peaks took a toll, and on the morning of August 14th, hope dwindled as the Spanish climbers' teammates awaited their descent. Little did they know, the mountains had already claimed their friends. In the evening, realizing the futility of waiting, the Spanish climbers began their descent. Thousands of meters below K2's summit, near Camp 4, a discovery intensified the heartbreak. Alison Hargreaves' boot was found on a slope, 
and upon turning around they spotted her body dressed in distinctive green attire 300 meters away in an unreachable location. Exhausted and disheartened, they realized the harsh weather rendered recovery impossible. The best female mountaineer in Britain, a symbol of resilience, was left behind as they pressed on with heavy hearts, continuing their journey into the unknown. In the aftermath of that heart-wrenching incident, a storm of debates swept through the town. Whispers echoed in every corner, questioning Allison's judgment for embarking on a climbing expedition with two little ones waiting at home. Critics accused her of recklessness, branding her decision as insensitive. Yet, amid the controversy, a different narrative emerged. Supporters rallied around Allison, hailing her bravery as a beacon of inspiration for women everywhere. In the face of adversity, she stood tall, proving that one could juggle the roles of mother, wife, and adventurer simultaneously. Her bold choice reverberated, leaving a trail of fearless women in her wake, scaling the heights of the world's most challenging peaks. The story unfolded, gripping hearts with the suspense of societal judgment and the thrilling ascent of newfound aspirations. In a daring quest, Alison Hargreaves set out to conquer the three highest mountains, fueled not just by her passion but by a desperate need to overcome dire circumstances. Burdened with debt and having lost their home, Alison's husband, Jim Ballard, had closed their climbing store in Derbyshire to fund Alison's previous exploits. With their world crumbling, Alison became the family's sole breadwinner, embarking on a year-long mission to climb Everest K2 and Kanchenjunga. Her goal? To secure her place as Britain's top female climber, an unprecedented feat. Little did Alison know that her decision, driven by necessity and ambition, would lead to an outcome nobody expected. Fast forward 28 years and tragedy strikes again. Unbeknownst to Alison, her son, Tom Ballard, meets a tragic end just 100 kilometers away from where she took her last breath. The story of Alison Hargreaves is one of extraordinary successes and an unforeseen heart-wrenching conclusion. Alright, picture this. Picture yourself on a thrilling mountaineering adventure, right? Now, imagine facing the tough choices Alison had to make. Would you have taken the same path, considering even the seasoned mountaineer, Peter Hillary, decided to turn back? Was Alison brave or just a tad reckless? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The mountain awaits your verdict.